Oh, I'm supposed to stand over here. I didn't miss my mark. Uh. <laughs> All right, are we good? Hey, welcome uh, to tonight's uh, program. We're doing, this is uh, live webcast, so we're being seen uh, everywhere. Which camera? Hello. Uh, across uh, the U.S., which is very exciting. Uh, and uh, people have sent in questions for tonight. Uh, we're going to be reading those and taking yours at the end of tonight. Uh, and we have uh, really a, just a, a stellar a panel of people tonight. They've been very generous in uh, coming from uh, a few hours away <laughs> tonight uh, and battling traffic. So I'm going to just go ahead and introduce them, and we're going to launch in. Uh, so first off, uh, Gary Marsh. He's the founder of Breakdown Services, as you, you all know what Breakdown Services is, uh, a company he started over 40 years ago when he was just 18 years old. Uh, his company has single-handedly changed the way business is done between studio, casting directors, agents, managers, and actors. Please welcome Gary Marsh. Richie Keen is a WGA award-winning comedy writer and director with recent credits, including Traffic Light and Important Things with Dimitri Martin. He has worked as a writer and or director for series on networks such as Fox, CBS, and CW. Please welcome Richie Keen. Rick Pagano, CEO of uh, Pagano Manueller Casting, has cast over 20, uh, sorry, 200 films and television series. Just 20, just, just he takes it easy. He's kinda, he's kinda bored. Uh, uh, over 200 films and television series and theater. Uh, films you might recognize include X-Men, Alien Resurrection, uh, Hotel Rwanda, and of course, 24, the series. Please welcome Rick Pagano. Carrie Barden, uh, he is a partner at Barden Schnee Casting, has offices in both here in LA and as well as in New York. Uh, they're known for casting big character-driven feature films like Mirror Mirror, which is out now, as you know, The Moth Diaries, The Three Stooges. They have many projects currently in various stages of production, including a P Peter Farrelly project with an all-star cast, including Elizabeth Banks, Kate Winslet, Gerard Butler, Hugh Jackman, and more. Please welcome Carrie Barden. Hi guys. Hello. Hey. It's a male-only panel tonight. <laughs> um, so uh, we are going to start with a bit of a history of uh, tape. I mean, tonight is focusing on taped auditions. It's a it's a much more narrow topic than we normally cover at, at SAG Life Raft, uh, and that way, and we can get that much more specific about the nitty gritty. So. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the history of tape and taped auditions and where it started when you guys started your career and where it is now. Uh, so, Kerry, what do you think? Oh, God. Uh, where tape started, I guess, was... Uh, well, I started casting about 20 years ago, and we were taping auditions back then. Um, and at the time, you could tape any uh, film or television auditions and could not tape theater auditions. I think that's still the case. Um, and we used to have those giant cameras and VCR tapes, and, and uh, now it's uh, all digital, and it goes into a streaming computer and is accessible pretty much immediately after you start taping. So, um, so it's come a long ways. Um, there are different kinds. There are different um, websites that you can use. Uh, the the easiest one is the one that Breakdown uses, which is EcoCast. Um, there are some that the studios are still using because they had contracts that are a little cumbersome at this point. But uh, it's, it's made life a lot easier because we don't have stacks and stacks of tapes and we don't have to FedEx tapes out to, you know, producers in London that takes two days, you know, that used to take two days because of customs. So it's just been, it's, it's, it's streamlined everything and made everything simple. Um, we also get tapes from all over the country that are on, um, different kinds of YouTube or uh, you send it and uh, things like that that uh, you know are easily accessible and easy for actors to do for themselves so you don't have to go to a studio and have it put down anymore you can do it with your iPhone um, it's just become you know a, a really efficient way to to see actors and have auditions done so 
Anybody else? <laughs> he, that was pretty inclusive, except for the yeah. part about the hand crank used to get really tired, <laughs> tiring. <laughs> It's, it's interesting also to, to realize that, you know, we used to uh, have the three-quarter inch machines. And, uh, and those were huge monsters that would break your back just to move. And then, oh my gosh, we have half inch, which was amazing, but you still had to ship, you know, FedEx. And, you know, now everything is digital online. And everybody's spoiled. <laughs> well, Richie, you've worked as an actor for quite some time. So as an actor, how has it changed for you? Um, well, you know, I haven't been acting for a minute. So uh, <laughs> I could tell you that um, it's made things as a director incredibly convenient. Okay. And um, it's actually opened up, I think, um, even in the last five years, a lot more opportunity to people I would not normally be able to see. Um, you know, from Toronto, um, you know, from a different coast. And so it's allowed me to actually see more people um, than I would normally see if, if, if they weren't taped. So would you say that now you can just see that many more actors than you could before? Or is it just speeded up the process so you see just as many? Um, I think in a situation like when I was, uh, like Dimitri Martin's show where we were shooting, you know, 50, 60 pieces over a three or four month period. I never met an actor, uh, which is not how I prefer to do it. Um, I never was able to be in a room with an, an auditioning actor, not one time in the, the entire process. Every single person that we cast was on tape. And um, we had a, a stellar casting director, and uh, Julie Ashton, and she made selects for us. And then the, the great thing about about having an audition taped is when you're all in a room, uh, you know, you have a stellar casting director, a, a B minus director, <laughs> and, and hopefully a, a B plus or an A minus writer. Um, someone auditions and they leave, and uh, you usually don't talk until later in the session about what you just saw. Um, what was interesting, specifically on Dimitri's show, is we'd all finish the day, go back to our office, and watch. The same thing, we'd all come together, talk about it. I may not have seen something that someone else saw, so then we'd go back and watch it again. And if, and if we weren't taping, and if we didn't have it on tape, uh, someone probably wouldn't have gotten the job that should have gotten the job. Um, so the thing that I, I like most about tape is, is that it uh, gives, gives me the, the ability as a director to really sell an actor that I want to use to the writers if I'm not the writer as well. So how has the process of casting changed, and, and how are you using tape now versus how you were using it before? Uh, well, when we did Dolphin Tail, uh, we just did a nationwide and Canada-wide search um, for the kids in the movie. Um, and we were able to set up a website that people could access and then send their tapes to that website so that we could see kids that were not represented or kids that weren't in Los Angeles or, or New York or, um, you know, Vancouver or Toronto or, you know, some of the bigger pools of talent. And so we got these tapes from all over the country and got to see kids, you know, that we wouldn't have been able to see had we not had tape type auditions because they'd have to drive to one of the, the uh, cities to be seen. So it's just made it accessible to everyone. The downside is you don't hear very many um, directors or producers saying, I watched the whole tape and it grew on me. He or he grew on me. That's right. Now, I'm serious, and that's the problem. We've had that with a lot, a couple of television series especially, where there's just not a lot of time, and you end up with a bunch of producers in a room, and it's hard enough to get their attention to sit down and watch. Um, they're captive audiences when you have a live audition, and they're not when it's on tape. They can fast forward after 10 seconds. And so you don't get that opportunity to let a performance grow. One of the things is also, though, that you know, um, producers and directors, their field of expertise is not necessarily actors. And a lot of times, they're influenced by who's hot, uh, who they've just watched the night before. And you know, I know that you know, from your point of view, when you're trying to sell an actor, uh, to a producer or a director, 
that having that tape uh, that they can watch online immediately gives you a, a really important and valuable tool to get an actor in the door that you wouldn't normally have been able to because it, it was like, well, they were in so-and-so. Well, I, I never saw that and kind of moving on. This way you're able to say, well, wait a minute, I just sent this to you, take a look. You know, makes a difference. Uh, both, I would, to both, uh, uh, they're both right from my perspective as a director writer. Uh, I turn off an audition very quickly, um, which is a shame. Um, it sometimes is, is uh, the reality of the situation and I use, I use the tape often for someone I like who maybe someone else shut off quickly uh, and to, to really say, no, 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 dig in here, so, you know, yeah. take a look. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I actually just had an interesting experience just this week in which I was working with Marta Kaufman, the creator of Friends. And um, it, it was really interesting because I was sending her links to different actors and she wasn't necessarily responding to the actors in the same way I was. And so today we, um, we saw some people live and I ran to the office, picked up the camera and the, and the uh, tripod drove to her office, got there, and she said, no, no, we don't need a camera. We didn't use the camera, she was there, the other producers were there, she's the writer-director, and I had a really inter interesting experience, which is that we all ended up loving the same people. Um, all of the decision makers were in the room, there was no reason for videotape, and not only that, but I just found myself going, oh, I really like this direct, this, I, mean, I love Marta, I had a great time with her, and I found that our tastes were much more similar than would have been reflected in our looking at taped auditions. There's an, an, an example of something where it really was the opposite of what one expected. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to add to that, I mean, I think live auditions are, you know, important and usually probably the best way to present yourself. But when we were doing Winter's Bone, um, I was putting people on tape here in Los Angeles because the director was in New York. And Paul and Allison uh, were putting, you know, people on tape with Deborah Granick. And uh, Jennifer Lawrence came in to tape in L.A. And I sent the tape to, or the feed to, the, the link to um, Paul that night after that and said, make Deborah watch this tomorrow because I think it's really special. And um, then her producer decided that we should probably do a few days in L.A. after that. And we hired about, I'd say about half the cast in L.A. because Jennifer's performance and her audition, as well as a lot of other actresses, uh, was strong enough for the producer to say, yeah, let's take a trip to L.A. And then, um, you know, we ended up hiring Del Dickey and John Hawks and a few other people f in the movie from that trip. So, so tape works, you know, live, live auditions work well, too. So. It's very strange, also. I find, especially when I'm doing commercial work, so pretty much exclusively when I'm doing commercial work, I actually watch the person on the monitor that's standing right there. It's very strange. Like I, It's almost like I want to make sure they look the same way on television. It's very strange, um, but I do that. So, I, God, I, I, would, I would never not, I don't trust myself enough to not take I think it makes sense. I, I, I think it makes sense because I think you can have a different performance. I mean, it's, an audition's a, a live theater moment when you're auditioning in front of someone, but it was, it's also important. I worked with Jean-Pierre Genet on the one time he worked in America um, before he did Amelie, we did Alien Resurrection. He would watch only the camp, he would only watch the monitor. And I was a little surprised by it and put off by it at the beginning. And then he would say things like, ah, oh, the camera loves you, <laughs> to actors. And, but he was right. I mean, I, didn't, I really learned something from him that it's important to not just look at the person, it's important to look at the, the image. And also there are performances that don't necessarily work live, but that do work on camera. And that was a lesson for me to learn. Would you say that the different directors have different, uh, well, obviously they have different uh, sensibilities, different uh, desires around how the casting process goes. So for instance, Richie may not be there in person, he's fine to look at everything on tape. Do you have other directors that demand a certain process that's different and the use of tape is different in those processes? Do you know what I mean? I have a lot of directors that actually prefer to watch tape. Um, you know, uh, uh, at some point, they want to meet the actors and work with them and see if they're on the same page, but it, tape is sometimes a a little less intimidating, a little more comfortable for a director to go through the process of seeing what kinds of 
talent is out there to access. But yeah, so yeah, each each director is different though. I mean, they're all different, just like actors. You're good. Yeah. Okay. You look like you're just. No, no, no. I was. I was good. I was just thinking. Yeah. You're thinking. <laughs> it's like wow. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about. Uh, I want to talk about pre-reads for a second because we'll start at the beginning of okay. of this. Uh, sometimes pre-reads are taped. Sometimes they're not. How do you decide? We tape everything. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, and then I, you know, hopefully send just about everything to directors or producers. You know, sometimes it doesn't work, but you know it's just a way to work on something with with our office. So it's not. I mean, pre-read kind of implies that you're not good enough for the director or the producers, but it's not actually the case. Sometimes it's actors we don't know. You know, um, sometimes it's uh, actors that you know managers or agents who I like are saying you haven't met this person, but you know you'll like them, so I'll meet them and read them for something. You know. Um, but it's a, it's a, I think it's a, any, any time you can work with material, it's a good thing to do. So pre-reads are not something that, uh, an actor should consider a slight, I don't think. Yeah, I hate the nomenclature of pre-read. I really don't, I don't, we don't use it in our office because it just implies all sorts of stupid things. <laughs> um, but in terms of tape, we, um, the dirty little secret, at least for me, is that um, we will say, that was terrific. Our job is to say, that was terrific, because we really don't have time to get into a debate with you. <laughs> if, if, there are, if there are 99 other people that were better than you, we don't necessarily want you to do it again. <laughs> and, sorry. And so a lot of times we'll say, you know, we'll have them, we'll have them look at the tape, we already know the answer, which is they're not going to look at the tape because we're not going to recommend that the most directors and producers we work with don't really want to look at everybody we saw. They really only want to look at the people that we liked. So, um, And often, if, if we can, the people we liked will end up coming back in. Sometimes, though, you'll have a pre-read session, or what they call a pre-read session, where the director will suddenly walk in the door, and or the producer will, or if someone's wonderful in what in one of these pre-read sessions, uh, will say, you know, wait five minutes, uh, and we're going to walk you downstairs and or upstairs, and 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 I want you to do the same thing for the director, or the producer. So you know, sometimes, I, and sometimes we'll just put it on tape and let the director or producer look at it. It actually, the, you, know, you know, the process starts a little earlier than that. And uh, uh, Milo, would you uh, generate the screen for me? Thanks. Um, one of the things that, you know, casting directors um, use is, you know, the uh, demo reels, what used to be called demo reels, uh, submitted by the agent or the actor, especially if they don't know the actor and they want to get a sense of what do they look like on film in the medium, which is you know what they're going to be on. And um, going back, you know, talking about what used to be and what is now, um, the concept when it was you know a three quarter inch or a half inch tape or DVD for that matter, an actor would compile their show reel, five minutes, what have you. And it was a cumbersome thing because they had to maybe get to minute four to see the comedy because they were casting a comedy. And now the whole concept of an actor marketing themselves has shifted so that instead of being a real, a, f a compilation within the casting process, and I, and I really underlined within the casting process, the casting director wants to see what the actor looks like performing something like what they're trying to cast. So for instance, you know, we, we push all the time that actors should put clips in, give a title, give a description, and you know, don't submit every one of your videos, but submit the videos to help the casting director saying, hey, this is, if I did a procedural drama and I'm being cast in Criminal Minds, that's the thing that I want to submit. 
because you're helping the casting director make a choice then uh, in terms of, oh, they can do that, let's bring them in. So all they have to do is, you know, click on it, watch, a, you know, 20, 40 seconds, yeah. and, and say, oh, yeah, they can do it, bring them in. Um, and instead of going through three, four minutes to find a reason to bring the actor in. And it, it starts there at this point where the choices are being made to bring an actor in for a pre-read, uh, to see if they can then handle the specific material uh, that you know is being cast. Um, so it all it kind of all starts right at the sort of the headwaters of the casting process. That you know what do they look like on tape? Can they do this? Let's bring them in. Let's see if they can re handle the material, and then let's forward that on to the producer or director or whoever, or the network, what have you. So, you know, in, in looking at the process, you have to, as an actor, these are all, it, it's not just about tape. It's about marketing opportunities for you as actors. And, and video is the, I think, so it is really the key thing that actors use these days to market themselves and their ability, not pictures and, and uh, so much anymore. Yeah, just to jump in there, uh, this is just me. Um, I don't care what kind of quality your reel or video is, just me. Um, I, I've cast people, I, I would say there's no excuse anymore in my opinion to not have the kind of scene you wish you could show uh, with how cheap it is now to just go shoot something, it, whether it's a scene you wrote or a scene from a script you read. Um, I, I could tell you, I looked at, there's a, an actress who's become very successful. I remember her first reel that got sent to me five years ago. And you could tell she had front loaded anything that, lo that was expensive. She had a couple lines on the West Wing, that was first. She had a, a really expensive commercial, that was second. And as we started getting later in the reel, at the end, she had been cast in a film that then fell apart, it didn't get made, it was like, gonna be a big job for her. And as an as a apology that that happened, the producers and the casting director said, well, you know, here's your audition tape if you want it. And at the end of her reel was her with her pages, it was grainy, and that was, that was the thing that I saw that was like, I've gotta have that girl come in and read for me. So I, I look at, you know, YouTube, Funny or Die, it, it doesn't matter to me anymore. It, 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 it was one, there was a time where I, I can't speak for anyone else, where it mattered to me, it mattered to most people that it was a expensive, glossy thing they had heard of. You know, listen, the WGA that I won this year is something you've probably never heard of. It was a digital show that was huge among a very small um, group of people, high school kids. <laughs> and, uh, so if someone, if you saw in someone's reel, Aim High, you know, this digital series, uh, you've never heard of that, you know, what, that could have been anything, you know, so, but people were really wonderful in it. And so if I saw that tape, uh, I could absolutely be sold. So just, just to sort of piggyback on what you were saying, I would really encourage you, and, and you know, coming from having been an actor myself, you know, to, to get w what you want, you know, when I was an actor, I used to, ah, if only I, I never get to do one hour, no one's ever seen me do drama. I mean, I would have had to have gone and gotten film, and I mean, you can shoot something now. And um, I just, I think that's an invaluable tool um, that people don't use quite enough. Yeah, and I think to, to just to add to that is, um, your reel should start out with you because um, I know who George Clooney is, and I've seen reels where, you know, we have famous actors l opening the reel, and it's like, okay, I already know this actor. I'm trying to find you, you know. So it should open with the person I'm supposed to be watching. Um, Can I say one thing on that, too? Uh, I looked at an actor's reel a couple days ago who had a great scene on Justified, and he, he put this whole the whole 30-second scene before to explain what his scene was. He wasn't in, but felt that, you know, maybe I did. 
I just again, just this is just me. I don't care where it started. I don't care where it ends. I don't need to understand the story. I, I just want to see you act. Yeah. It doesn't have to have context. Yeah, that's right. To put a wrap around what Gary was saying, we just actually cast someone in a lead role today where we didn't have the time to do pre-reads. I'm using that word. I can't believe it. What do you uh, call them if you don't call them pre-reads? Just auditions? Readings for us. You know, readings for the casting director. Um, we didn't have time to see people first. So just because of the, just the, we start shooting next week. So um, we looked at some, some tapes. We looked at people's reels. I did over several, and I picked one or two, and one of the, in the old days, before we had reels uh, with a quick link where you could just click on it, you would have had to see the person first. Now, this was an actress whose work I should have known, um, and I didn't. Luckily, I watched her reel. I said, this is someone who's right for the role, brought her right in for the director and the producers, and she got the role. So this is, this is called EcoCast, is that right? The, or what the, is this part well, called? Actually, what we're looking at right here is part of the, just the submission process. I just brought up Blair Hickey, because uh, you know, he did a really good job putting together his, uh, his demo reel. Um, you know, it's, it's really well thought out, and it really explains what uh, the casting director is going to watch. Um, it, this is part, it, you know, what I wanted to do was go back to the submission process. Yeah, could you walk it, us through it, that? It's, it's yeah. itself, and, and I mean, when you're looking at uh, submissions uh, these days, um, you, know, uh, you know, when you're looking at, um, let's go to, a, just like, let's say, Jane by Design, You've got these kind of numbers, and I don't want to go too deep into this just because this is a casting director's actual site. This is not, you know, um, sort of anything faked, but look, look at that number of actors that a casting director looks at, 2,403, and they select 26. And when they're looking, um, you know, They're all bringing up Paxil right now and <laughs> affects her. There's all, therapists waiting in the hallway. All of these actors have a demo reel. It is, the, you know, or, or clips or whatever, whatever they've decided to upload. It is, it is a necessary part of an actor's toolbox these days because, you know, I hear so many and have heard so many complaints over the years from casting directors that, you know, the picture... The actor walks in the room, and it's like, uh, mm -hmm. "Is this your younger sister from 20 years ago?" Or, and and the film at least gives a casting director an idea of what the actor really looks like. The other part, you know, of this is, you know, and I'll just speak to this, but um, the audition process, which ours is called EcoCast, um, you know, we have it's two facets. One is the facet that a an actor walks into the room and the casting director tapes them and it becomes part of a link and when the producer watches it, it automatically links their resume and pictures and the casting director notes with the audition. But one of the key things about EcoCast is the fact that a casting director can turn out a breakdown and can be based in Los Angeles and invite actors to do a self-taped audition through EcoCast and then be able to watch that audition where the actor is not in town, not available, what have you, and then decide, you know what, this actor is really good. You know, look, uh, we'd like you to come in on a callback. And the actor has never had to um, come in for that first reading. And what, you know, I'm, I feel is that it's really given actors a chance who are, let's say, based in LA, based in Texas, based in New Orleans, based anywhere in the country, to be able to audition for roles as long as the casting director is willing to look at actors not just from their immediate geographic region. And there's a lot of reasons why, time-wise especially, that they're only able to look at actors in that region, but uh, pilots, uh, feature films, um, a casting director can cast 
projects now based in LA and, and bring in actors from around the country knowing what their work is using, again, technology, using the, this concept of tape, we still call it tape, but this digital medium to really open up the uh, um, opportunities uh, for actors. And I don't know one casting director that isn't open to that because they, every casting director that I ever talked to loves talking about somebody that they found, loves talking about somebody they had to fight for to bring in that ended up being a major, major find in terms of talent that the producer or director could claim they found. But it was really the casting director that found them by being open. So the, the first step, obviously, is the casting director posts the breakdown. Yep. The agents submit. We see these numbers come through right. on the casting director website. Then what happens? Then the uh, casting director um, you know, goes in and, for instance, and these are all auditions that have been um, uh, uh, taped by the, uh, in this particular case, by the casting director. And they send this link on to, um, uh, to the producer. Okay, so let's sidestep for a second. So, because mm -hmm. this is where you guys come in. So you've taped these in session, you've selected the best ones that you want the producers or the directors to see, and then they're uploaded? Well, they, they, yes, we upload the uh, auditions from the tapings. Uh, and then uh, we put notes on the ones, you know, what we, you can put notes on them, you know. Um, they go into the separate characters uh, categories. And um, then you can take, you, I mean, it's a great website because you can put, you know, your selects in a certain file and they also have access to everybody's audition if they want that. Um, depends on how much time a director and producer has to look at stuff. So, most of the people we work with, though, are either in the room or they watch everything, you know, and then send the directors and the stuff that they like to their um, uh, directors. I mean, producers, sorry. So, the directors have already seen this with you, and now this is going on to producers. Is that what you mean? Most of the time, yeah. Okay. So I mean, th this is. You know, the, this is what a producer would be seeing. Yeah. And they can, it's organized by role. So if I wanted to just look at these roles, I can click on the actor and I can see all of their takes. Uh, I can see their resume. I can look at their photos, um, notes, um, you know, don't want to get too deep into this, but just to give you, you a sense that in terms of a package being delivered by the casting director to the producer to, you know, to convince the producer this is the person that I, you know, that I'm very confident in, in these people. You pick who you like. Um, you know, the casting director now has the ability to not only link the audition to the actor's resume, but also link their uh, demo reel as well. So it becomes uh, a package that the casting director presents in, in essence to help the director and producer make the right choices. OK. Is there anything else on, on Ecosys that no, you wanted to no. tell us? OK. Uh, so I understand this is the major way that, that uh, the submissions are, are handled, but there's other sites as well. Is that right? Or is yes. It? OK. Yeah. I mean, th there, uh, it's such a robust um, uh, process that, the, you know, the, some people, uh, and it's very competitive. We're all pushing each other to do different things. And, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for competitors out there that are doing the same thing we are. Um, it, it's a tough uh, and very exciting area because it, we're really just pushing the envelope and we continue to push the envelope trying to develop things that are services that um, help the, the casting process. You know, as that's, that's our job. Okay. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the logistics of, of taping. We've got uh, people 
streaming in from all over the country. Uh, and even someone emailed me today from Toronto that they're going to be watching. So people are sending in tape to you guys from all over the place. What are some do's and don'ts? Do you suggest people use uh, a service, or it, is it OK to use their own iPad or iPhone and send them in? What, what are you finding? <laughs> I've I mean, stumped them. The, <laughs> no, no. The, I mean, there's a lot of things. But the main thing is that uh, it has to be something that can be downloadable. And I'm not the technique technically savvy person in my office so you know if it's and so I don't know which ones those are um, but uh, um, like Adam in my office downloads everything that we get uh, that's not through you know us putting people on tape and then then it's uh, put onto the site for whatever film we're working on for that character um, and if it's not downloadable then we can't transfer it to the site um, so you, you need to find out if you're putting yourself on tape, if it's something that can be downloaded and then put onto another site. One of the things that I always hear, you know, again, I, I, I'm in a great position because I get to hear casting directors call me and, and complain. I get agents calling me and complain. But one of the things that, you know, that I hear that actors do all the time is they have their reader stand right next to the camera as uh, they're doing an audition that they're sending in. Well, of course, the mic is typically on the camera, and uh, the, ac the reader is standing right next to the camera. Guess who the casting director can hear? The, your reader. So you know, when people ask me, I always tell them, have your reader take two big steps back behind the camera. The sight line is still good, um, and the camera mic will pick up the person that should be heard and not the reader who it really doesn't matter. The other thing is that I always tell actors, don't wear the fish t-shirt. You know, wear something solid. Um, don't wear, wear something with wavy lines or anything like that. I mean, those, those are just some basic things. I mean, uh, anyway. I would, I would add just one thing and it's not, it's just my particular preference and that is that um, there are sites for um, where your audition is downloaded, like you send it, for example. And then there are other sites that stream. And personally, I prefer streams. I prefer links where you're streaming. I just don't have time for it to download yet another videotape that's on my, you know, that loads up my, because the way we work, we could end up with 25 gigs a day of downloaded audition tapes, which then slow down my computer and I just don't necessarily need it. So I prefer streamed. Also, you're sitting there waiting for it to download before you can watch it. By the time it's downloaded, I'm already moving on to something else. That's how. That's where I am. I concur. Yeah. Uh, Vimeo, YouTube, those are. Uh, I'm not, not being in a casting office. I don't have to transfer downloads and things like that. But uh, you send it things like that. I, I, it's amazing how our attention span works. I will not. I might even download it, and then I I will just go. I'll, Oh, I never looked at, you know, I just won't necessarily see and, it. And the technology is moving. The techno I've, I have another um, company that I work with uh, uh, in a whole different area. Movie, um, watching movies online is moving towards streaming and away from downloading anyway, so. Yeah. So, uh, so what you're saying is that if someone, just back to the technology issue about actually taping, you really can't notice a difference whether it's done by a service or whether someone's done it on an iPad or you haven't you don't watch something and go, oh wow, that was that's just done really badly. You seem to be like okay with the technology as it stands. I think if as long as you can see the actor and what they're doing, you know, it doesn't matter you know if it's if you're noticing that it's done really badly, you're not watching their acting. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a that's the thing is that you don't want anything to obviously jump out technically that detracts from the performance because as you said you, the casting director is then watching what's bad and focused on that and not really focused on the the acting and there's you, you know there's it's everybody says oh wow it's it's really difficult it's really expensive to do 
It's not. It's a consumer camera. It's a bed sheet tacked to your wall. It's going to you know Target or Home Depot or some hardware store and buying some clip-on cone lights and instead of overheads you've got now a key light and a spot. Uh, all of that is really easy to do and I mean it's you're not trying for production perfection but what you what you're trying for is to just not have distractions from your performance. You know, if, uh, are we talking specifically about you guys sending in tapes when you know we're casting something? Is that kind of what the focal point is? Well, this would be for people that are not, let's say, in LA and don't go to an audition, send it in through their agent. All right, I have a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> a, long, a long time ago, in a land far away, I used to cast a lot of theater, and I cast a production at the taper of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and Glenn Close came in for Jose Quintero. And, and um, you know, they were talking, and Jose goes, so Glenn, read something for me. And Glenn says, what do you want me to read? Well, and he says, uh, and he kind of scans through it, and he goes, yeah, pick, how about this? She looked at it for about 30 seconds, and then she read with me, off book, the entire time. Oh. She had memorized the entire play. He had arbitrarily picked a scene she was ready. If you're going to send us a videotape where we're not asking you to, you know, to come in and audition, and you want to send us a tape, off book. Can I please really, Because on that? We're, this is the Olympics, guys. You're talking about competition from people like Glenn Close. The new Glenn Closes are out there. They walk in, they're off book, they're they're amazing. And that's your competition. So if you if you want to send in a tape to send in a tape, great. But if you want to send in a tape to get the role, just realize you're in the Olympics. Okay? Yeah, just to piggyback off that. I, I would say, I would, for me, the way I would say it to you is um, be an expert in your audition. So when I'm up for a directing job, there's so many people capable and have done way more than I have. If I'm on an ex, if it's not my show and it's someone else's show, if I'm on an expert on their show, even if it's just the pilot, even if it's just the script that I'm that I'm reading for the job, they don't want to hire me. If I'm selling. Uh, if I'm pitching a, a pilot that I'm going to write, if I'm in my page and I'm, oh, that's right, and there's this character, John, and um, uh, uh, John works at, uh, he works at a store, and you have quite, if I'm not an expert, who wants to buy a show from someone who's not an expert in their own show? Be an expert in your audition. Look, if you have a question, every, everyone's going to start by saying, do you have any questions? The answer is no. Okay. Unless you really have a question. Okay, if you really are confused by something, otherwise, I want to see what you came up with that you think is great. There's a difference between coming in and saying to me, the vibe being, what do you have for me, Richie, as opposed to, this is what I have for you. It's a present. I hope you like it. I think it's really great. I had a great time picking it out, and I'm going to leave now, right? So I always feel like, I always feel like um, I'd rather... I hate to use the words right and wrong, but I certainly would rather someone be wrong and love their audition. I will tell you that if you are someone, this is in my limited experience, and these guys have a lot more than I do, if you are someone who tries to think of what we want, and you, and you give a good audition, nine times out of 10, you probably won't get the, you, you, you will probably do very good acting, and you might even be someone who we bring in for a guest star or a co-star or something like that. But if, if this is for, for I, I work pretty exclusively in, co in comedy and in television, if you're coming in for a pilot, um, I want to see, I, was, I directed a show for Spike two seasons ago. We had a, there were three roles, sort of like The Hangover. There's a guy in the middle who's a good, nice looking guy. There's a guy on the right who's kind of a goofball. There's a guy on the left who's this Latino player, lover, Latin lover, stud. He's the guy who gets all the girls on the show. One after another, people are coming in who just look exactly how you picture it. So there's a guy who comes in for the Zach Galifianakis part. He's a you know, pudgy Latino guy. He's got a pompadour. <laughs> and he, he walks in the room with this confidence. I mean, just confidence. And he just murders this audition. And he, he leaves the room. And my casting director and I look at each other. And I said, can you have him read for that role, the player, the stud? This guy comes in and just, we changed the whole role. This is the guy who got the role. The guy in the pilot, who's the player, was a heavy, overweight guy with a pompadour who had a strong take 
on this guy. So don't apologize. Don't, don't ask questions for me unless you really, really don't know something. I don't want to tell you what to do because honestly, even, even the stuff I write, man, I'm just hoping it's funny. I, I'm just hoping that my script, that I, God, I'm lost in it now. I've done nine rewrites, and the ne I don't know, even know what the network wants anymore. I'm actually hoping you're going to come in and find something. You know, I, I cast an actress in a Fox show I did who tagged every scene, and the other writer didn't like that. He's like, well, what are we here for? She and I'm like, because she's going to make your shit funnier, man. We <laughs> cast that girl. She tagged every scene, and the writers got the credit for her tag. You know, she had a take, you know? Be an expert. Okay. Uh, you guys have anything to add to? I think I just think it's important that the, that you remember that the technology is just a tool, and that what we're trying to get to is that the acting's more the acting's the important thing, and that the videotape, you know, as Carrie said, for example, it may not the environment may not be important, the quality of the tape may not always be crucial. What is crucial is that you're a good actor. You mentioned something before about being off book. Uh, th there's actors here really mix things about that. We hear from casting directors that we should be holding the sides up during during a, a, a taped read or or a non-taped read, uh, and then some say don't hold the sides at all. I know. What was your take? Did you say that they should actually be holding the sides or not even looking at them? I'm saying I'm saying it's a very specific thing. I'm saying. If we're not asking for you to come in and read, we're not calling you and saying, come in, we want to see you. You're an actor out there, Actors Access, whatever it is, and you want to get our attention. Different situation. Yeah, okay. You should be off book. If we're calling you for an audition, and we know this is an actors, there are a group of actors who have three or four or five auditions a day, they don't have to necessarily be off book. Okay. However, since most auditions are taped, People who take their sides and put them on their knees, I'm not supposed to use four letter words because we're online here, right? But you know, you go to gyms and you work out for hours and hours to work up those arm muscles. And I always think, just take your goddamn arms and lift them up. Because just think of the calories you'll burn. The reason being that because of video, to, I mean, this is germane to what we're talking about. Because we, we won't cast you if we can't see you. It's a really amazing concept. <laughs> if your sides are on your knees, on your thighs, whatever it is, if, you're, if your sides are here and you're looking down, the camera will see the top of your head, guys. Whereas if you actually burn some calories by picking up your elbows, we can see you and therefore we can cast you. And just one last thing on all this, um, and, and the Glenn Close of it all. It, all. All you really have, all you can really do is try and outwork everyone. You know, like I got into writing and directing later, and I knew the only shot I had was to just uh, churn out good stuff, like outwork as many people as I could in my peer group. And I always say to actors, when you're working on your audition, and everyone has their own process, and that's okay, you know, are, think about it. Are you working about as much as probably everyone else is? Do you, maybe are you working a little less? Or are you working more? Are you working harder on it? You know, ask yourself that question. Um, off book or not off book for me, it's really, is it good? You know, how much work have you put into it? How much have you thought about this? Some people can pick it up and just nail it. Some people can't memorize, they have to work a lot harder. I have a friend who's dyslexic, he has to work twice as hard as everyone else. All you really have is, is your work. So I think people get lost in a sea of things that they have no control over, and, and their pictures, and what they're wearing, and what people think of them, and at the end of the day, what you have is you got these pages, and out, try and outwork everyone if you can. Well, I think you said it earlier, too, when you were saying, you know, you have to. I mean, there are 99 actors that can come in and read it and make it really wonderful, but you have to make it, and I know every actor's heard this a million times, but you have to make it your own. You have to create the character and think like the character and, and uh, make it pop and be special. Okay, well, we're going to uh, take some questions uh, from the audience here and also from the audience that's online. 
Um, there's a, a question that was emailed in by JP Mano in Toronto. What, if anything, can I do to ensure that my submissions, uh, always received by casting before the start of the sessions, will actually be considered by producers along with in-room talent? Um, I've suggested that my agents try to confirm with the casting office that the link works while they have someone on the phone, but those eyes belong to only the first gatekeeper. So I, I think what uh, this person is saying, <laughs> essentially, is that uh, he's in Toronto sending something in by tape. How does he know that it's actually being looked at in, in LA? <laughs> it, you don't. You don't. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 it's just a hard truth is you take your shot and, you, you know, it's just like there's 2,000 submissions. How do you know if, you, you know, for most submissions, how do you know if that picture is, uh, the digital picture is, is looked at? All you can do is it's it's like submitting yourself for a, a regular employment job. How do you know your resume is looked at? You don't. But the more you follow through, the more you submit yourself if the role is correct and you're not just submitting yourself for a woman's part because you're a man because you'll get noticed. Um, <laughs> you, you know, uh, Most of the casting directors I know are very serious about what they do, but there's a limited amount of time we do get tired. There are thousands of submissions to go through, and so it's an imperfect process. And so, a guarantee, the, the question was, how do you guarantee? Well, how do you, there, there is how no do guarantee. You know? We do our best to get to as many pictures, auditions, resumes as we can, and we fail. We fail. But we fail less than maybe, I don't know. We, we, we try to fail as infrequently as possible. If it's, a, if it's a simple link to look at, you know, you can do it while you're on the phone with someone. If uh, you have an agent that's making sure that it was received and as he or she says, um, you know, is it viewable, you know, then you've got at least one person helping you out there. So, I mean, again, we do try to look at most everything we get. You or can't just look at everything. Deliver it on horseback. That will work. <laughs> um, first of all, JP is a very talented actor. Hey, JP. Um, uh, in terms of, I just want to say this, and this may, this may be obvious, but, you know, I think I could speak for everyone. We actually, we want you to be good, and we want to find new people. Um, the, the, the handful of casting directors I've worked with who are all excellent, um, I hear from people sometimes that they're intimidating, and the whole process is intimidating, but just, just if this isn't in your head, just so you know, when you walk in, I'm nervous. I need to find this role, and I haven't found it. So um, this may be this may be sound obvious, but just when you're mind effing yourself from the time they say your name, you know, you're in the waiting room and you're ready to go, and then they say J.P. Manu, and you go, <laughs> and you know, you're walking down the hall to get to the office, and by the time you get to the office, it's all gone, <laughs> right? So while you try and come up with ways to distract your left brain which I would recommend for real. I think music is a good tool, like hear, hear a song in your head or something. Um, theme song, no joke. I tell actors, have a theme song. The second you hear your name, let, hear your theme song. <laughs> Don't distract your left brain. I have a Beastie Boys song I could recommend. But, um, but just, I, I just want to say, like, when you come in and it's silent, and everyone's just sitting there, it's not because <laughs> we're like in a, I'm, I'm just, if, I, I'm, a, I'm worried. For myself and my project so it's never it's so rarely about you you know um i just wanted to say that i think people sometimes think uh, on this side of the table we're all mean and we don't want you to be good and it's actually quite the opposite and and i know personally there's nothing i love more once i've gotten someone who's an established actor in my cast to find someone who's in the sunday company of groundlings or has this great youtube channel or you know, there's nothing more fun to me than discovering yeah. someone. I mean, it, it. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big cheerleader for casting directors because I see how hard they work. You know, in the in their offices, and I've seen it over the years. And and you know, I always hear the term that you know, casting directors are gatekeepers, like they're trying to keep you away. <laughs> and it, and it's really the opposite. They're gate enablers. They're they're really rooting for uh, the actor, and, and especially the prepared actor. They, I've seen casting directors go to bat 
uh, for uh, actors uh, where the producer is saying, yeah, but I want a name. You don't need a name for this. This is, this is, this is somebody who will be a name. And uh, you know, I, I think that if actors walk into the room and think that th the casting director is on my side, otherwise they wouldn't have brought me in in the first place. So th they're bringing me in because they think I'll make the casting director look good in front of the producer. Um, it will take th a lot of the edge off of like that walk into the room and like, <gasps> oh, the gatekeepers. And it's, and it's not. It's really a paradigm shift. I mean, we really need to see that we're all in this together, helping each other and in service to creating this project. So back to JP for a second. Uh, so someone who's in JP, uh, JP's a guy. I don't know JP. JP's JP Manu. Yeah. He's a very talented actor and director. OK. I'm from Toronto. I should know this, right? Um, so JP in Toronto has sent the tape to his agent. Let's say he's done this correctly. It's downloadable. There's a link that you can stream from. The fact that that submission has a video of the audition attached versus the other submissions that are pictures and resumes, um, does that have any kind of advantage at all, or is it just all seen in the mix? Yes. <laughs> yes to which part? <laughs> yes, yes, it does have an advantage. There's an advantage, of course. Oh, okay. You can click on a link, and then you stream something while you're on hold for, for someone. Yeah, of course. OK, great. Uh, and if he wants to find out if it was received, he can just call the, he can have his agent call the associate in your office and they can say yes or no, I suppose, correct? Or just have a uh, reply, you know, let me know you got this. Okay, reply, yes, yeah. I got it. Great. Yeah, if it's on, and if it's on Vimeo, you can see if people have watched your yeah. video, depending on what service you use. Oh, okay, so he can create something like that so he can actually not even have to deal with his agent and find out himself just by looking at. Yeah, like, you know, viewed. if I'm sending a, a specialty reel for a directing job I'm up for to a certain job. I, I can't see who viewed it, but I can see on a, any given day how many people, if any, have viewed it. So Great. I think I can assume if it's been viewed, um, that was by the office that I wanted to view it. It wasn't some random person online. No. Okay. Great. Uh, so this is a question from Chance Reardon, who's in the room. Chance? Hi, Chance. It took you a second to recognize yourself. <laughs> Okay, so Chance says, um, they, quote unquote, say don't worry about the professionalism of the taped audition. Do you believe that that to be true? We covered this a little bit. Um, but it simply seems that uh, a more professionally produced piece would hold more weight if it came down to a draw between two actors. So is that true? If you had two auditions, they were both great, one was more professionally taped than the other, would that make any difference? Not for me. No, like I think we said, as long as, long as we can see your acting and your choices, uh, as, you know, as long as it's not distractingly grainy and bad for me. Yeah, as, as long as you can see it and it's good, you know. I don't think the quality of the tape, if you went into um, a studio and taped it, or if you taped it in your bedroom, you know, with a sheet tacked on the wall and you can see your face, you know, and the acting's good, then no, it doesn't make a difference to me. If you're taping your own auditions and you're doing something like that, um, you can go to Ikea and get the, these, like, round uh, paper sort of, lamp, I, I did an entire Third Eye Blind music video with those lights. <laughs> Bought them, did a music video, returned them. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> They're very good fills. So for, I don't know, 10 bucks, you can go get one of those things and they, they fill in nicely. Like if, you're, if you have lighting from overhead and it shadows on your face and you're doing it at your house, just put one of those balls right there. And... We, we shouldn't have to say this, but um, since it's also for online, there are auditions that are just a little creepy. <laughs> We have a very famous audition that we actually distributed around the office <laughs> many years ago. Um, you know, it was a woman, she was all by herself, she had a camera that had the Zoom, and it, and it seemed as though her, and she was reading both sets of lines. Amazing. And that's, that, that was a little creepy. I, it, was, it just seems you, you guys out there, you should be able to find someone who can read the other lines. <laughs> We, we kept thinking that there was a closet in the background. We kept thinking her dead husband. She had killed her husband, and he was in the back closet. So there is a level, and it's not about the quality of the film, but you do want to make sure that there's a kind of standard about, you know, as someone said, Gary, was it? Who said, you know, if the guy, if your reader's standing too close to the camera, and the, his vo you can hear his voice, and you can't hear the voice of the actor, that's important. We need to be able to hear you. 
Um, we need to not have the camera shaking. Uh, I, do I have to say these other things? I mean, you guys know there's a level. You don't want to. You don't want to have a long shot. Where we, you know, where we need a magnifying glass to see your face, right? You understand this? Uh, severe close-ups don't work. <laughs> other than that, what other rules are? I mean, there's some basic things that I think we take for granted that maybe some people out there don't know about the standard for what you'd send us. It's probably a good idea to look at it before you send it to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, newscaster, you know, you want to make sure that if you can, in most cases, it's from here to here, you know. You don't want to have tons of room up here, you know, and, and you want your reader to be someone who doesn't sound like um, uh, he's reporting... Uh, you know, like it's Darth Vader or someone who's, who's talking like we hear most casting directors read. You want to have someone who reads pretty well, gives and takes, talks, talking and listening, stuff like that. Doesn't yell the, uh, the cues to you necessarily. Do you care if the, uh, the other role that the reader's reading, if it's a, a male playing a female, female playing a male, do you care? I, I mean, ideally, but do like do the best yeah i mean if you can you really if it's something as simple as can you get a guy or a girl yeah you should i mean I, I, please try and get the right if you can't and that's what you got i guess that's what you got but i i think get your it's, it's not important to me except to the extent that it might help an actor if it's a romantic scene and it's a man reading and he reads with a woman and it helps there's a chemistry that you can actually see on camera that's that pervades the scene then yeah it helps do it I mean, I feel like if you're putting yourself on tape, give yourself as many advantages as you can. Obviously, in a casting office, you know, you're going to be reading with whomever is reading because they're reading different roles all day long. So, you know, you might be reading with a man that's reading a woman's part opposite you. Um, but at home, if you're doing it, try to get it as good, close to the, the scene as you can. Here's the sad truth. We work in it like a 95% failure business. Whatever it is creatively that you do, writing, directing, acting, you're coming in with two strikes against you, sadly. It just is the way it is. For, for a whole host of reasons that have nothing to do with how wonderful and talented you are. So just, if there's, to answer the question, anything that's within your control, try and control it and try and knock that out. Okay. Uh, Let's see, I'm going to take one from online here, so we'll go back and forth. Uh, sorry. So this is, okay, we did that, memorizing, never mind. Uh, I haven't memorized the questions. Uh, dear expert, I guess that's you guys. Uh, what are your views on the posting of made-up scenes prepared by, quote-unquote, specialized demo makers in the industry are these a good choice when they don't have material to post on a website? Uh, and also, how do you recognize a good demo maker business since there are so many in the city of LA? What is a reasonable price for this kind of work? Uh, there's no name on this. Some of this, obviously, you can't answer. If or you Maybe you will, but uh, can you tell us about specialized demo makers and if you think that's a good idea? Gosh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. And the next I, question. I, I, uh, I, I, I don't know either. Here's uh, uh, m my own philosophy about it is that probably for the amount of money that it would cost you to have someone, I'm probably going to get firebombed fire by these people who make demos, demo reels. Um, for the amount of money that you would pay someone to make a demo reel, you can probably go shoot an entire short film <laughs> yourself and then send us that. You know, the, the clips that Gary was showing us, if someone has a special skill, like you know combat fighting or some sort of instrument that they play or something, should they have a clip on there? Would that be helpful to you? Only if we're looking for that um, in a project. You know, we, well, did, um, we did a film this year called Pitch Perfect, which is uh, about a cappella singers. So, you know, if you can sing, yes. But if, you know, somebody's sending me a clip of them singing and I'm doing something that has nothing to do with singing is not useful to me. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that, you know, actors should spend the money or attempt to um, put demos up of 
all of their physical skills that they may have. Typically, if that's what a casting director wants, they will ask for it, and then the actor can film whatever's being asked for, and they have their choice of, of then submitting it. But I think an actor can spend way too much money uh, needlessly uh, in that pursuit. And, and theatrical casting is not about, you know, can you ride a horse, can you, you know, jump on a pogo stick. It's about the quality of the the acting more than anything else. And if they need somebody to, that knows how to, you know, jump through fire hoops, they'll hire stunts for that. Okay. Uh, should we use props to simulate conditions as close as possible to a real set? So this is a, they're sending in a taped audition. I'm so curious. I want you guys to answer first because I'm so curious. Always as many as possible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially if it's the larger, the better. <laughs> Make sure they cover your face. I, uh, props are, a, I, I mean, it's a good question because some people do feel comfortable with props. I feel like, you know, whatever helps you in the scene is what you need to do, but I don't need to see somebody working a blender. You know? <laughs> or, you know, so I mean, you know, if somebody's, I, they're not, they're not necessary in a taped audition, I don't think. Um, Carrie is very kind. But well, you know, I mean, if like somebody's like gives themselves business, like somebody's you know cleaning their purse yeah. out or something, fine, you know. But it, as long as it doesn't get in the way of of what you're trying to do in the scene. Here's what I would say: if your character is doing an activity in the scene, you can, if you have something that you would have on you in your purse, your water bottle, your sides to simulate the vibe of that activity, that's all you, we need. You know, if you're working a blender, but instead you're looking through your pages and that's your activity, that's fine. I mean, I would, my personal opinion would be no, don't bring in props. If you would have it on you, if it's your phone, if, if the character has a gun, use your phone. It doesn't look silly. Please don't, don't do this. You know, don't bring anything that might be scary. If you're committed, well, listen, I, people, people I know, good actors have been have told me they brought in a, a toy gun, or a gun. It's, it's, it's. Please don't do that. But, but it, you, I, I know it sounds crazy, but if you, have, if your character is a scary person, has a knife or a gun, use your phone, use your water bottle. If you're committed, we don't. It doesn't. It, we're pretending. The whole thing's pretend. <laughs> okay. I, I still have people that, uh, even though their cell phone happens to be in their pocket. They're still talking on their fingers. <laughs> okay. This is such a good question. <laughs> Make it a speakerphone. <laughs> what about food? food if the character's yeah, eating. Absolutely. <laughs> Not unless you're sharing. <laughs> Before you open the beer, make sure you shake it. <laughs> I, cast, I cast the fir very first television I ever did was Santa Barbara. And I was in a room with no windows, and somebody came in and auditioned. They popped a can of beer, and it just went all over the place. <laughs> For the next eight weeks, my room smelled of beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> No, weapons and knives, you know, knives, weapons, no, don't do that. So people taping... They scare us. <laughs> people taping uh, and sending the tape in, if they're taping it at home, do you need to have a plain backdrop? If, they, if it's a... If they're ba this, this person asks, uh, should it be against a, a blank wall? Is a living room backdrop, backdrop too distracting? Uh, should the background ideally mimic the conditions of the situation? I've had people uh, send tapes in where they're taping in front of an open window, picture glass window, and you can't see their face, so that's not good. Um, if it's just, if the background is distracting, then that means the acting isn't coming through. I would say if you're taping in your home, you know. Yeah. I agree. I think the simpler the better. We want to focus on you, not we don't want to take a second look at what's going on around you. So you're not really you're not making a short film. You're just trying to. Hide. You highlight your acting. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, so, what? Where do you think? Where's the future of taping going? Where do you? I mean, it's it's we've hit our stride in a sense, but is there more changes to come? Um, 
the more and more uh, we're going to probably the next phase really um, is Skype-like uh, in that the actor will audition remotely. Uh, the casting director will have uh, a two-way uh, We're already doing that. There, yeah, that's yeah. not the next phase. We're already, We're doing. already yeah, in exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's Skype-like. It's only, my point is it's only going to get better, the, that technology and, and less sort of awkward. Um, it's it's going to become so normal that uh, nobody's going to think it's special or un unusual. And that's really, you know, uh, I mean, if we, you know, want to get crazy, we can talk about holis you know, the uh, holographs and, and all of that stuff. The but, pack. Yeah, but, but really, <laughs> the ability for, you know, one person to be in one place and another person to be in another and be able to carry on a conversation and watch a, a scene, it's, it's here, it's only going to get better. We did, uh, for Pitch Perfect, we did um, callback auditions with the lead actress that we cast for the chemistry reads. And one producer was in North Carolina, and one and the director was already in Baton Rouge, and one producer was in LA. So we did Skypes with the producer and director remotely, and then the producer and the lead, and the three guys that were reading with her. And it's a bizarre an unusual situation, but it's kind of what, as we were saying, you have to get used to the new ways of doing things, you know, so. So there's a computer with a producer and a computer with the director, and then the director's giving notes to the actor. It's just weird, you know, but it's what we're doing. And, and then just additionally, in terms of what's the future of tape, just, again, I, I this, um, I came out of making my own, I went to film school, I came out of shooting my own stuff, the cheaper it gets now to shoot things, I just think uh, for so many reasons, that is the future. Shooting your own stuff, making your own stuff, uh, in terms of marketing yourself, and in terms of just being an actor, creating your own work. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing. And when I, the first thing I made at the end of 2005, there was no funny or die, and YouTube was a new thing. YouTube was new. It never occurred to me to put a link up. I, I had a DVD that got passed around. And this is 2005. So, you know, cameras are getting smaller, they're getting better. And um, for me, I, I can't say enough how much I think creating your own stuff um, is worthwhile, because you can do it now cheaply. We watch stuff on Funny or Die almost every day, so. Is that people that, that have submitted to you, or is this people that you found on your own when you're watching Funny or Die or YouTube? Or? Uh, well, first, because an actor that, you know, I like had said, you got to watch this stuff on, my stuff on Funny or Die, which I did, and uh, then started seeing other actors that, you know, I wanted to find out who they were, you know, and, and you know, so it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, it's a good tool because somebody that I liked said, watch this. And then there were other people that were doing stuff on it that I thought was interesting as well. You know, we just actually um, launched, literally last week, uh, a new thing called actinglink.com, where um, anybody can uh, upload an audition scene. And it's searchable by like genre, comedy, drama, um, and you know, state, location, uh, gender, age range, ethnicity. And it, it's, it's just a place, instead of it being confused with like YouTube or Vimeo where there's a lot of other stuff involved, it's all related to acting and agents can look at it and say, show me actors that are looking for representation. And it, it, the idea being is that it's a place where hopefully everybody can go and see things that are uploaded by actors and these are you know an individual auditions rather than a scene and it and it speaks to the the process of what a casting director can find uh, online but again you know it's there are so many different you know just like you said every uh, actor uh, you know can shoot their own stuff there are so many different places where actors can distribute their material and get it out there. And uh, it, it's, it's really 
you know, for the actor, it's really about really looking at what the marketing opportunities are to get your message, your brand out there. And there's so there's no reason why these things can't be done. There's there's really no reason whatsoever today because the technology exists to be able to do it. I have a question for those of you in the room. How many of you have put yourselves on tape for an audition? How many of you have shot a short or some content, you know, separate from an audition? Interesting. Good. Yeah, amazing. What? What? So, the question is, how do they view the content on YouTube? We don't. I mean, we don't find it. Uh, is the answer. It, my my point isn't. It, my point is a separate point from how do you get your short to be seen. My point is. Um, you spend most of your lives waiting for someone to ask you to act, and then uh, they say your name in the waiting room and you panic, and then you do your audition and maybe you hit a seven or eight out of 10, and I would say to you, uh, that should be part of your portfolio, and if you can, even again, not caring about the context of a scene, if you can create, if. As a, if you're gonna, you know, hire one of those services, I would say sort of like what Rick was saying, just go shoot a two or three page thing, and, and you may not use it. You can do I, I, you might shoot ten things before there's something you like, and you shouldn't pay. I mean, frankly, we are we people can say what they want about L.A. This is a town of artists, and I realize for every artist there's probably four douchebags, but. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, is that, that's not for, but, 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 but honestly, I mean, pe whatever people say about LA, I, I have been, I've, I get to work with, I, yeah, I work with a lot of people who are difficult. I also get to work with some of the most creative people on the planet, and I'm sh sure many of them are in this room. So you can find people who want to make stuff. So um, I don't know how you get it seen. I, I, I don't know. I got some of my stuff seen, and some of my stuff hasn't been seen. That's, yeah, that's been there are ways. Um, I'm working on something I'm not really allowed to talk about, except that I can say that you may have read about Google and YouTube getting together and giving $100 million to a variety of producers. And one of the projects I'm doing is with a group of those producers. And we've gotten some very well-known talent attached to it. And we've gotten great directors, writers, actors. Um, the studios are scared because it's the emerging technology, guys. And so if you create material cheaply, which you can do, and if it's good, um, sometimes there are ways to get your material seen. Um, this is, I'm not an expert in the digital world, and so I, but you should know about SRO, and you should just start reading up. Read up on the emerging technologies, and you'll find that there are ways for your video to get seen more quickly or more easily than others. So how do you think the convergence of technology is gonna affect all of this? I mean, this is what you're talking about with Skype. So, yeah. I, I just did a project uh, with Warner Brothers that we ended up distributing on Facebook and AOL. You know, I'm doing a movie right now that we're choosing right now between Yahoo and a host of other uh, you know, it's the, the new sort of indie filmmaking is here's a million or two million dollars, and instead of going to a film festival, we got our money back by making a deal with uh, Netflix, and then we'll release it overseas. Um, it, you know, what Netflix is doing right now is, and what Hulu is doing right now. It, it, the, you know, when I the fir when I first started doing this, everyone wanted three to five minute things digitally, and Hulu now wants 22 minute things because you know you go and you watch. Um, it's always sunny on Hulu, and they put an ad up for go watch um, Crazy Kids. Uh, you may go watch. No one cares where it came from anymore. Um, it, it, you know, it, my niece and nephew don't even. The idea of networks is completely foreign to them. It's 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 really bizarre and interesting. So I, I, it's all it's actually people have been talking about this happening, and it's actually happening right now. Um, this this is that moment. It is all happening where it's all going to one place, and Netflix is now doing original series, and Hulu's doing original series, and uh, it's kind of happening right now. Yeah, it used to be that you know the networks, the only way to get your material distributed 
other than a feature film, and the studios controlled the distribution process and the networks controlled broadcasting. Um, the internet is the new broadcast medium that exists that levels the playing field completely. Which is an opportunity for you. Yeah. You know, um, none of us will get paid as much in that medium, right? <laughs> but, but again, in the portfolio of your career, that's okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but um, I, I'm proud. I, I, my stuff, usually I write a script, maybe we shoot a pilot, usually doesn't get on the air, right? You know, this, I take less money, but then I, my stuff gets out, a million, million views, you know? I mean, it's, it's a miracle. So it's like word of mouth is sort of back, you know? So um, that's, that's okay, you know? You don't have to get rich off that thing. Maybe you'll get rich off something else. But that's changing too. Yeah. What do you see as the, the role of social media? Is there, is there a role of it? Um, on my, the project, Aim High, that I mentioned earlier, uh, we did something. I don't know if this is going to be a, this was very strange. I had nothing to do with this creatively. When you viewed it on Facebook, it took your information and put it in the show. It just didn't do it very well. But uh, I do, this is a thing that's continuing on. We were the, sort of the guinea pig. We're like, the kid is looking in the yearbook and he's looking at the girl he likes and all the other pictures are pictures of your friends, you know? <laughs> that, that, our, our show did that. And again, they didn't come to us creatively about that. That was something they decided, sort of like doing a 3D conversion after the fact. Um, but in terms of social media and the viewing experience, some, there are some things like that going on. And I absolutely, I could just tell you as someone who's had a couple big million hit funny or die things that social media drove that completely. Um, I get, I've gotten more buzz off of some of those things than TV shows I've made. Okay, well, we have pretty much hit all the questions on the cards. Um, is there any burning desire, any things that we've missed that you want to add? We've done it all. When you, ha when you audition, um, if there's any way to do it, just try and make it sort of fun for yourself. Just If you can find a way to make it one point less, and this is about tape, but one point less, I got to get this job. Uh -huh. If there's just a way to say to yourself in any way, um, I get to act, I get to do this audition, this is why I got here, just a little bit less... The fun thing is a real thing. When someone's in the room having fun, um, it, even if it's a drama, it, it, it plays. There is, there is one question that keeps coming up and it's on several cards that we actually didn't ask, uh, which t comes back to the submission process. Uh, when you get all these submissions, these 2,432 submissions, do you look at the A-list agent's submissions first, or do you look at them all equally, or how do you sort through them? Uh, all of the above. I mean, I, you can look at the, just the character, you know, and look at the 2,000 submissions on that character, or you can go to, you know, the agents that you like or the management companies that you like that you know are going to submit people that you um, are probably going to respond to and look at them. I mean, it's all divided up. So, but I, in all of the breakdowns we put out, we go through, eventually we go through you know, the entire breakdown submission. It doesn't take that long. There's like, you know, 100 on a page, and, you know, if you know what you're looking for, then, you know, you look at the five on that page out of the 100 that you know you're going to want. One of the things that, um, you know, the ability to put notes, I think is, an it can be used or abused. So when an agency or when an actor is submitting themselves and, you know, they put a note like, I'm a good actor, <laughs> not a good note. Um, but if the casting director is uh, looking for somebody who speaks Spanish and your note says, lived in Mexico City for two years, um, that's key to what the casting director is looking for. And those notes do get read. And as they're looking through all of those submissions, those notes can determine whether the casting director spends an 
extra few seconds looking at you to decide, oh, do I bring this person in or not? So uh, again, you, you know, the notes that you put do get read, uh, but you know, front load them like you would Twitter because it cuts it off after 40 characters and the casting director has to click it. So whatever really the most important thing that you're trying to you know, market about yourself, um, that should be in the note and it should also be specific to what the casting director is looking for. And that helps the casting director too. I don't care where people are represented. I just, I pretty much trust my casting directors and if they've gotten to me, if you're at a place where you're in a callback or you're testing for something, at least in my experience, I don't care where someone's represented. If you got there, you got there. Uh, if there's a, let's say there's an audition that your agent uh, is has submitted you for, but you didn't get the audition, and so you go, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put myself on tape, and send the office the audition that way. Is that recommended, or is that okay? If that's your only option, go ahead and do it. If you're not getting any, if your agent's not submitting you, or if you don't have an agent. You send it. If they open it up, that's great. If they don't open it up, then you've you know you've put in some time. And but your job as an actor is is to try to let people know you exist. Yeah. Okay, I've got another question here. Um, it's for Carrie and Rick. Do's and don'ts for self taping auditions. So what tape what makes uh, an audition? What takes it from good to great? That's a tough one. I mean, I, what takes it from good to great? I mean, there's no quantifying that, really. If it's a good audition, then it's a great audition. If it's, you know, a bad audition, then it's not a good or a great audition. So, um, I mean, if you have a connection to the character and the piece, then it's going to be good to great. But I don't think there's nothing that could take it. I mean, especially working in a vacuum. I mean, when... when um, when I did a few, several years ago, I did a, a Boys Don't Cry, and I was um, out here. I was in New York then, but I was um, out here doing auditions for another film. And so, uh, on my lunch break, I decided to see actors for that, you know, because we weren't doing that out here. And uh, I had Hillary in, and Peter Sarsgaard, and a few people, and you know, a bunch of other people. And Peter's and Hillary's auditions were good. You know, but they hadn't worked with Kim or you know anybody else, and so they were good enough to be great eventually. Um, so good is good is good enough for a tape, I think. I don't know how to answer that question in less than ninety thousand words or something. It just it's like asking, you know, uh, read Stanislavski, read Harold Klorman, um, take acting class for five years. Mm -hmm. It's just too complicated. It's like saying, what's, what's a good actor? Yeah. And everyone has a different opinion about it. Throw a rock, you'll hit an acting teacher. Go ask them. We know it when we see it. <laughs> what's the best way to reach you all? Thank you for coming. <laughs> OK, next question. Uh, <laughs> I, I am, yeah, the, the shocking, if you go to IMDb Pro and you look up Pagano Mayweather Casting, you'll have, you'll find our address and our phone number. And we've turned off the machine gun nests surrounding the office. Today. There are a few landlines, but don't worry. Okay. I was going to say, well... Breakdown Services has a website. We yeah. can check it out if we need to contact you Absolutely. guys. Absolutely, and, and you know my email address, if you do admin at breakdownservices.com, that'll get to me. I mean, you know, I'm a service company. I service, uh, you know, my job is to be a utility uh, that is there when the casting director needs me and when they don't, get, get the hell out of the way. Um, and uh, same for the actors and same for the agents. I serve, I provide utilities and, you know, I have to and should be always available 
to ideas and thoughts because that's where I kind of have to recognize trends and kind of march in that direction. And I get that feedback from, I get it from actors, I get it from casting directors, I get it from agents, and uh, it's continuous. But the minute you start shutting that off is the minute you're not cutting edge anymore. Richie, what's the best way for actors to forge relationships with directors, get directors to see their work? I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. I mean, um, uh, it's like for any, any rule, people break it, and there's always an example. If you broke the rule and it worked, you know, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say please don't Facebook me, but the truth is someone has Facebook me, and I've looked at their, th I don't know. I, I mean, for, for me, I have a website, so people can Google me, and they find my website, and they email me through my website. Um, I, I don't have an answer. I think I think it's a tr I think it's tricky. I don't know. Is it Sorry. just as simple as do really good work and you'll get seen eventually? I think just get out there and work. You know, and if it, it you know, working is going to make you usually make you better. You know, or get you, you know, doing what you love to do, and uh, maybe you know, word of mouth will get people to come and see you. Who knows? I mean, there's no way to. There's no. Yeah. There's no rules, you know. Um, it's certainly, for me, easier to see theater Broadway and off-Broadway in New York than it is here. Um, but there is theater here that I do go to. Um, so, you know, just get out there and work, you know, because it's only going to benefit you. The, the trick is, is that, you know, just don't stalk casting directors. Um, you, you know, I mean, I, I always say whatever you do, it's okay to be aggressive with grace mm -hmm. uh, and and not be nakedly aggressive um, and if if you do it with grace I think it's it's appreciated because we're all in business to sell and you appreciate somebody's unique way of approaching you that isn't doesn't like turn you off immediately um, but that's you know that's a trick and so many people think that the more aggressive they are, the more that that's going to give them an opportunity, and it actually works against them. So I always say, do it gracefully, and it's OK. There's a lot of cards that have come in about you know, how, how, different, how actors can actually get known by you, specifically, uh, well, specifically the, the three people who are here who are in charge of hiring. Um, what what would you recommend that people do? Is it okay for them to email you anything, or should we say, just get your agent to submit for the appropriate roles? Again, for me, I I always trust my the people, the casting people I work with, and um, I think the more sort of communities of actors that you're in, whether it's you know, like on my side, on the comedy side, you know, if you're part of UCB or Improv Olympic or um, you go to a particular acting school, you know, they seem to have lines into these things. But I don't think, I don't, I don't think like getting in touch with a director directly in general makes sense. Um, I don't know what I would like if you sent me something and I watched it, um, but I'm not doing anything right now, I just won't rem remember it. it. So it's more, it, at least for me, it doesn't really make sense to get in direct touch with me unless I'm actually working on something that you saw in the breakdowns and you're passionate about and you know, you're going, hell, I'm gonna get in touch with the director and let him know how much I wanna read for that role. Well, part of what you're saying, too, is that, like uh, getting out there and working with people, too. It's like when we were doing the help, um, Octavia Spencer uh, asked me if I would see this actress that she'd done a short film with, which was Anna O'Reilly, and obviously we ended up casting Anna in the film as well. And, um, uh, you know, and we saw hundreds of women for that role. Um, so, you know, and I hadn't, I didn't know Anna, you know. Um, so having worked with an actress that I knew, it helped get her in the door, and we've cast her in two more films since the help. So, 
you know, just again, getting out there and working. Do you have a preference in terms of when people send in their taped auditions, how they should slate, if they should have uh, a graphic, or should they just say their name before? Does it matter to you at all? No? Okie doke. Um, <laughs> I'll throw that card out. Uh, there are some actors who, specifically some older actors that are not computer savvy. Um, now, not necessarily Nina, this is from Nina, not necessarily this applies to Nina, but she asks, uh, what happens to those of us who are before computers, BC? I think it's an incredibly fair question. Um, you know, I, listen, uh, a buddy of mine who checks the camera, or used to check the cameras out at Panavision, had to fly up while Brian Singer was doing Superman because it was a new camera. You know, it's a new, brand new camera. They needed this 22-year-old kid to come help figure out the camera that, you know, this epic cinematographers using. So I think it's a really fair question. And I think the answer is you have to try and find people, you know, there's a quote I love, don't let the things you can't do get in the way of the things you can do. So I, I think you have to try and, I don't know how to do my taxes, but I find someone who can. You know. How old is this person? 75. <laughs> Learn. Yeah. I, yeah. I I've, I've, it's not that hard. No. Learn. There's classes everywhere. And, you know, the technology changes so quickly, but I figured, you know, I mean, I'm older than the people in my office that are in charge of the technology, so find out from someone who can do it. I figured out that when my mother knew how to email pictures before I did, I better yeah. Yeah. get on top of it, you know? So. Well, I find that, uh, you know, agents have to respond to this or managers have to respond to, you know, the, the changing times. and. They will generally, you know, it's like, where, where am I going to put myself on tape? You know, ask your agent, ask a manager, ask uh, a friend who has done it, and they may be able to give you two or three places that will put you uh, on tape, shoot you, upload it, take care of it for you. If you are not, if you feel that all of that technology is going to get in the way of you, your performance, then these places do exist, and it's a commercial enterprise that they're providing and a service they're providing, and they're out there, and the agents and managers certainly know the ones that they like or that they trust. Use them as a, as a resource. Thank you. You're welcome. I would the tell Mac you to Google it, free, but yeah. you don't know. <laughs> but the Mac store has free classes in just about everything, true, so true. you know you can just go there. True. If you were, I mean, we're not asking you to dig a ditch. Where, and, and if, I mean, you may not want to be, in, my, my mom doesn't use computers at all, and she's a, an avid reader, but she also is not an actress. If you're an actor, um, part of the, one of the tools of this emerging industry is uh, technology. And so to not embrace that and to say you still want to be an actor is a little bit of a contradiction. It used to be that that was reserved for the directors and actors could be immune from having to deal with cameras, but now it's part of our lives and we have to learn how to do it. Uh, okay, well, one last question here before we part. Uh, Esther Che, uh, I feel more comfortable taping myself than coming into the casting office to be taped. If the actor's tape gets sent in via the internet, is the process of how it is seen, uh, process of how it is seen, and if the decision makers see it just like the ones taped at casting, then why should the actors come in instead of taping oneself? <laughs> um, usually, I think, you know, in casting, we do have a little bit of insight into what the director might be looking for in the character, so we might be able to guide you and give you some tips on what the beats in the scene are and so forth and so on. So I think, you know, just saying all of that, I think, you know, just working, and it's a collaborative world that we're in, you know, and so working with someone who, I mean, Rick and I have both done over 200 films, we're kind of, as someone said, experts in what we do. You know, if someone comes in and does a three-page scene, I can tell them what works and what will help them make it better immediately because I've done it f for over 200 films and, you know, probably a, a thousand people for each of those 200 films, so you can do the math. 
Um, so yeah, I know how to break down a scene, so it will probably help you to come in. Yeah. It, it opens a really interesting question, and I'll try to make it really quick because we do want to all go home. Uh, it's about connectivity. Act, actors, artists in our culture are carrying the weight of continuing to connect on a human level. And um, it's funny, E.M. Forster wrote something in 1906 called The Machine Stops. It's a short story about a world in which no one ever actually is in a room with anyone else. Uh, it's all done on, he, he predicted television screens, he predicted the internet, he predicted all of the world that we, we see emerging now. And it's frightening because it's, at the time it was considered science fiction. Uh, you should find it and read it. Um, the main thing is that face-to-face -face communication has no equal. And um, there are things we get by seeing you in person that we don't see on a videotape. And there are things you get from us as well. Also, we make decisions based on the audition in the room very often, not based on the videotape. You know, again, it is, it is a tool, uh, just as you said earlier, Rick. It's a, it, it is a tool. Technology is a tool. It has its place. You know, I'm. You know, I'm. I embrace technology, but I still like. I still see the value of meeting people, of being here in front of all of you, because there's not nothing that really can replace that. And I'm sure for an actor being in front of a casting director, doing a reading, getting the f immediate feedback from the room, there's nothing really that can replace that. So, you know, use the technology, but don't you know think that it replaces the human contact. Do you think there'll ever be a time when the in-person audition process will be obsolete completely? It'll all be technological? Maybe for pre-reads, but I think when it... <laughs> first auditions. <laughs> first auditions. When it, when it gets really down to callbacks and, and stuff like that, of course, who's to say? I mean, we're can, we can all take our, just our best shot. Um, it really depends on the show. Uh, and uh, yet, you know, when a show is, when you need to cast somebody and you, it's nine o'clock at night uh, and you need to have them on set the next morning, you use the technology because you have to in order to get the job done. Uh, but um, I just, I think that casting directors, as I know them, as I've grown up with them, they love the, the process. And I think they're going to go down fighting on that one. Would you guys concur? I'm more worried about the avatars. I'm more worried about directors who um, want to uh, who want to start using computerized actors instead of you guys. In, in the world of comedy, I don't think I, I don't worry about uh, if it's like a big project. I will always want to see someone if I can. OK. Well, I'd like to thank you guys. Uh, Gary Barden, Rick Pagano, Richie Keen, and Gary Marsh. Uh, these guys have been extremely generous with their time tonight. Um, they're not taking headshots and resumes. Uh, they do need to get home, so please uh, allow them to exit. If anybody can come back in, they will, but please allow us to exit. And thank you so much for coming, and thanks to the people who, uh, who logged in. All right, good night, everybody.